Hey Pentesters, I'm Sandy from Lab4One.com and I'll be presenting Rocket God's deep dive into the ArcRF1. This is the first of a three-part series. Today we'll cover the basic and setting up on Windows. In part two, we'll explore practical applications and part three will be all about advanced features and community resources. Rocket God, it is your time to shine. What's up guys, Rocket God back and I have a confession to make. I like Windows. So today I decided I'm going to make a video for you to use HackRF1, which is from Great Scott Gadgets. We're going to try it with Windows. I'm going to show you how to use flex pager decoding with PDW. We can basically take the signals that come from hospitals, police, and other things that still use pagers, and we will take those, decode them, and display them on our computer the actual text. I'll even show you how to send that to a Discord channel if you want to. We'll play with FM radio using SDR++, Cubic SDR, GQRX, SDR Sharp. We'll try some AM radio. We'll do some weather station broadcasts. We'll play with car key fobs. I'll show you how to use it with Universal Radio Hacker a little bit. Don't clown me if I don't get it all right or if I say something stupid because I'm not a URH master by any means. We'll try RTL433 so that we can take things that are sending out signals in the neighborhood, like uh, people's remote controls for their blinds, for their fans in their rooms. We'll try Dragon OS using VirtualBox, so I can show you how you can actually use Linux on Windows. Dragon OS is an operating system that comes preloaded with SDR, like tons of SDR stuff. So we'll try that for a little bit. We'll use SDR Trunk to listen to police scans. That's pretty fun because you can listen to all the police sheriff and pretty much anything, best buys, walkie talkies. You can listen to any type of stuff like that. We'll use SDR Angel so we can listen to ADSB signals coming from all the aircrafts in your neighborhood. Actually more than your neighborhood, talk about like 50 miles depending on your antenna or how you're gonna do it. But uh, it's, it's pretty fun to do. You can visualize the airplanes that are all flying over you. See their call signs, see their type of plane, and it all shows right there on your computer. So let's get down to it. First thing you need to do is download some kind of SDR software like SDR++, SDR Sharp, depending on your system and what you wanna do. But for this scenario here, I like SDR++. I can, mainly it's because it has this nice frequency manager and I don't have to keep adjusting my settings every time I turn off and on my computer or close the software. Um, it's very helpful. We'll start with Los Angeles here, which is where I'm at. And you can see what these flex signals look like. These are all flex signals. Um, while you're browsing through, you can just kind of click and check it out, save it to the frequency manager. Um, this is what it looks like. Let's go down and I'll let you hear what it sounds like. Oh, that is the sound of flex signals. But you're going to have to install a virtual audio cable. VB audio virtual cable is a great one. It's working for me. Now it's taking those sounds and it's sending it via software instead of to audio. Then we go to PDW here. Well, I guess let's go through these settings real quick. Um, you want it on NFM, narrowband FM. I have the amp enabled, IQ correction on just to get rid of that spike that's showing, which doesn't really do anything to you, but it bothers my eyes. LNA gain and the VGA gain, you're gonna have to adjust to your own distance from the signal and whatever else, but this is basically a a decent starting point. You'll notice that you get a lot of uh, garbled messages or no messages if it's not right. Then this is kind of auto, the, the, the bandwidth is auto doing itself, but you will, if you're doing it manually, do it to 1,000 or 12,500 is a great place to keep it. Let's jump into PDW. PDW is what's going to decode the messages for you. 
Now you want to make sure that this one is moving here. Even if there's no messages, it should be moving. That's how you know that your virtual audio cable is set up correctly. So you want to enable POXAC decoding, all these. You want to enable flex decoding and all these. And this PDW interface setup. This is where you want to have your sound card set to the virtual audio cable. That way it's coming out of SDR++ and going into PDW, where PDW can translate it and show it to you. Now this all gets sent to a log. Wherever you have this running from, there's a directory called log files or log file. But I've also made a script using Python, which I will show you here. If you go to my GitHub repo for this, and let's see, I have it at, this is my GitHub right here, rocketgod-git. The repo is pdw-log-streamer. Just download this and change the webhook in there to your Discord, and you'll have to see. I'll show you how it looks. So here is PDW and the Discord server at the same time. You can see as messages are found, they're logged. And then every five seconds, the Python script is sending that to the Discord server so everyone can see. Now we all know that uh, break time is over and a 10 minute break has ended. <laughs> but really you see some cool stuff on here. On 4th of July, a guy blew his eye out. I don't know if that's cool stuff, but it all comes on here. You can see, I mean, there's actually way too much information on here. There's, it gives you their name, phone number, uh, medical issues. This guy's having a recurrent hemorrhage, psoriasis. Tough. Uh, yeah, it just goes on and on all day long, all night long, 24 hours a day. You could just watch what's going on in the hospitals. The CHP shows up on here. Um, your local water treatment plants will send messages saying that, you know, humidity is out of range or chlorine is low, things like that. It, it's a lot of stuff that should be secure that is not secure. It's basically anybody can review what's going on in the airwaves. All right, let's jump on to our next project. That wraps up another informative session about the Archive F1. To purchase the Archive F1 yourself, head over lab4.com where you get the best price and the best service. And of course, catch up with the rest of this video series with Rocket God. Got a question or want to share your own Archive F projects? Drop a comment below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Take care and see you next time.